You guys remember Ralph Rangnick, right? Manchester United hired the German boss in 2021 to be an interim coach after Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was sacked. Actually, Rangnick was brought in to help with player recruitment, and the plan was even that he would continue in a consultancy role at the club once a permanent manager is hired to replace him. But despite being brought in as an interim for recruitment, Rangnick ended up being criticised for on-field performances and he was eventually let go. But what what if Manchester United actually let him do what he was hired to do? What if they listened to his recruitment advice and hired the players he recommended? Well, let's look at what happened to the nine players that Ralph Rangnick recommended to Man United. Well, first of all, we all know what happened to Erling Haaland. Yes, Rangnick told United to sign him, but that didn't happen. To be fair, we wouldn't really blame this one on Manchester United. Even Oli wanted to sign him as they previously worked together at Mulder, but Haaland would just not have gone anyway. He obviously wanted a club that was at a much better place, so he chose Man City, and now he's tearing things apart everywhere with them. But one Man City guy they could actually have got is Julian Al Alvarez. Rangnick recommended Alvarez to United even before City got on the scene, but the board refused to go for the move. Well, now he's also tearing things apart at the blue half of Manchester. He's got 16 goal contributions in 42 appearances since joining City, while Anthony, for example, has only managed 6 goal contributions in 33 appearances since joining United. The levels are so obvious. Oh, and he's also a World Cup winner. Speaking of World Cup winners, did you know that Rangnick also told Man United to sign Enzo Fernandez? Of course, that didn't happen, but there was a time where United were reportedly leading the race for his signature. What's happening with Enzo? Well, you could argue that he joined the wrong club. It's clear that he's super talented, but Chelsea have been in a bad state since he joined, even though his abilities still shine through regardless. He was named Young Player of the Year at the 2022 World Cup, so his talent is undeniable. Man United should have definitely gotten him when Rangnick told them to. Instead, they ended up going for Amrabat and Mount in the summer, two midfield signings that are turning out to not be so great for the club. Another South American player Rangnick recommended for United was Luis Diaz. The Colombian winger is an insanely skillful player who's been super effective for Liverpool since he joined. He has had 16 goal contributions in 40 Premier League appearances, while Sancho has had one less in 18 more appearances. The difference is just so clear. Another attacker Rangnick recommended was Alvaro Morata. Yeah, he didn't exactly have the best spell in the Premier League when he joined Chelsea, but Morata was definitely a better striking option than Anthony Martial and Wout Weghorst, who they eventually got during that period. And well, Morata has now managed 10 goal contributions in 13 appearances for Atletico Madrid this season. Meanwhile, all Man United's attackers put to together have scored just one Premier League goal so far this season. That tells you all you need to know about the recruitment over there. Still on the attack, Dusan Vlahovic was also recommended by the current Austrian national team boss. And even he, despite not having the best time at Juventus right now, has got five goal contributions in nine Serie A appearances for Juventus this season, helping them to really mount an early title charge in the Serie A. We don't need to remind you of the number of league goals or all Man United attackers have managed as a collective this season, do we? Hoyland, Sancho, Anthony, Martial, Palistri, and Rashford have all scored a total number of one Premier League goal in 11 appearances. It's a little embarrassing, to be honest. Now, the one Man United might not feel too bad about missing out on is Christopher Nkunku. Chelsea beat them to the Frenchman's signature, but he's still yet to play a single minute of official football for them and might not until the new year. Considering the state they're in, United would not have loved to have a new signing who's been out for so long because of injuries. But if you look at the fact that Nkunku had 32 goal contributions in 36 appearances for Leipzig last season, United might come to regret not signing him when he's back to full fitness. Nkunku is also a very versatile forward, which is not something you can't say for most of Man United's attackers. Ralph Rangnick also told United to sign Conrad Leimer, a midfielder he worked with during his time at Leipzig. The Man United board refused to sign him, so Bayern went ahead
ahead and snatched him, and he's proven to be a really solid midfielder. Instead of signing another attacking midfielder in Mount last summer when they already had a world-class one in Bruno, United could have easily signed the young central midfielder Rangnick recommended when he recommended him. Finally, Rangnick recommended Josko Gvardiol for Man United, but the board refused to go for him. And well, just like the other two players on this list, Pep Guardiola went in there and snatched him. Now Gvardiol is proven to be really solid and really versatile at the back for City. But to be fair, United have a pretty solid defence, so they don't regret this so much. At centre-back, they have World Cup winners Varane and Lissandro Martinez. They also have Lindelof and Maguire even seems to be returning back to top form. But Gvardiol's age just makes it feel like he would have been a really good signing for United, especially for the future. From all these recommendations, one can tell that Ralph Rangnick's talent ID is really top-notch. Which of these recommendations do you think that United should really, really have signed by all means? And which one do you think that they will regret not signing the most? Tell us in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on the bell notification so that you never miss out on new content. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye!